regularradio.com. Back live to Hotheads, where activism happens. We had a bunch of technical difficulty. I hope uh, some of you have figured it out and moved over on the meow stream now. Right, meow. Meow. The first time meow. for me in this studio. So we, we got it. We uh we had a little bit of a dead air there, so we want to make up for lost time and get straight into this. Yeah, straight uh, into it. we're gonna talk interview. to interview Ben. I said his name wrong. Apparently, it's Shep Iro. We'll find out. We're gonna. Find this is out. nothing new. I screw <laughs> up names all the we time. We were thinking he needed a juggalo name, like uh, you know, sugar yeah. coffin jam glitter, or uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Should all of us give our give each other juggalo names in the meantime while we wait to get him on the line? I don't know. What do you think? You need a Juggalo nickname, Mike. I'm can. not going to come up with one. If you have any for Mike Can, any any suggestions for Juggalo nicknames, uh, the studio line in here is 617-606-3701 if you would like to uh, weigh in on this important question. Uh, you know Sugar Slam is the uh, the famous Juggalette uh, ministress that uh, does all the uh, all the uh, promo videos every year, and this year was a was a real doozy. It's like a twenty five minute long video that they do every single year to announce the gathering of the Juggalos, and that's going on right now yep. in Cave in Rock, Illinois. Has been going on since Thursday. I heard um, one of my friends told me that uh, that there had been ten arrests already before Uh-oh. the event even started, Uh-oh. but. Uh, it also, it, it exists, the gathering is on private land, so I'm pretty sure, like, police have to have warrants to come yeah. in, which is, uh, which is interesting. The, the story that we're going to be covering today, ICP has announced their plans to sue the FBI, is the title of it, on vice.com, and, uh, you know, before we get Ben on the phone, we're going to try to get him on the phone in a second, um, <clears throat> the story, you know, he, he actually talked to Violent J., over at the uh, gathering, he was on the tour bus, and uh, Violent J, this is the quote, uh, he told me that ICP is going to do something huge for our fans in the world. We're suing the FBI to be <laughs> taken off their list. They're trying to kill our band, and we have to fight back. And he's basically talking about the FBI put the Insane Clown Posse on the National Gang, gang, did I say that right? Gang. Threat assessment yeah. list. Fourteen-year-old white kids everywhere feel really cool right now. <laughs> yeah, and there was you know more quotes like really, really, what does this mean for ICP that they're on the gang list? Uh, it means that uh, stores like Hot Topic won't carry their merchandise, which is going to kill the kill the band's revenue stream. Does Hot is, Topic still exist? Apparently, it does because that was that was the <laughs> one that I think that they're I'm so existing s- by selling. I'm so disappointed. By ICP gear. <laughs> Yeah, no, I ICB know all about the fans ICP are, are, gear. Are dedicated and they, and they buy that stuff. So I guess Hot Topic is one of the stores that will no longer carry ICP. Even more reason why uh, why they have more street cred they, than Eminem. Yeah, they don't want to carry it because <laughs> they're called the street gang by the FBI, which is they, just ludicrous. I I want to know the implications of this gang classification. Like, does it mean that? Uh, oh, we have someone on the phone. No, what's going on? Are we off the air again? He's shaking his head at us. Uh-oh. I, we don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on. I think on he, here. I see what's going on. He's calling. Oh, guest. there we go. He's trying to attempt to call him, and he's working it out. And uh, we'll we'll hopefully uh, is Ben on the phone right now? Hello, Ben. Now we can't hear him yet. Oh, he's still talking. All right, All right. so we're working we're, on that. Yeah, but I was... we, we're kind of doing things on the fly today. <laughs> Just bear with us, right? I know. I feel like we're as reckless and and wild as a uh, juggalette in a uh, suburban mall. We, uh, oh, we're getting you, knocked on the window. Did you see some of the pictures? We're too? good to go. Okay, oh, we're so we're good to go with our friend Ben. Sh- have, yeah, say the name again. Ben, see if you oh, say it right. Ben Shapiro. Is that how I'm pronouncing it? I'm. Pre- is that your name, Ben? Are you on the line? That's my name. Oh, is there we go. <laughs> All right, from Vice.com. We've been through a lot to get you on the phone. We don't have much time. We're starting to run out of time, so we, we want to uh, get right to this. I mean, it's up That's to you guys, but you guys, we we can go long in here. Okay, we can stay long. Good. But uh, we we generally uh, we wanted to get right into it because we've been talking about this this Vice dot com story you just broke. You you've been over at the big gathering, is that correct? That's right. I just got back uh, last night. I was there for one full day, did and you? Uh, it was wow. honestly one of the most incredible music festivals I've ever been to in my entire life. I can imagine. I've been wanting to go. I I have to tell you, I've been wanting to go to this for like years. Mm-hmm. I almost went last year. 
and I wish I had. <laughs> I've seen all the documentaries, The Family Underground. Did you take like a full day's like cleansing, scouring shower when you <laughs> got back? Yes, I was covered head to toe in Fago. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, my God. How um, many titties I, did I have, you see? I've got to be honest. i got to be honest with you guys. You know, going into it, I kind of assumed, just like a lot of these documentaries portray these people, I, I, I went in assuming what I think a lot of people on the East Coast, on the West Coast, think about this, these, you know, the jugglers, because they're kind of a violent gang, that they're antisocial, and I learned immediately how wrong that was. These are some of the most incredible people that I've ever met in my entire life. I'm feeling really sentimental about the entire series. Wow. Oh, man. I can't believe it. I, 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 I wish you had stayed. I feel like you, you, have a, you have a good story there. I mean, there's been multiple documentaries about the Juggalos. The, uh, the Family yeah. Underground is a big one. And that also kind of confirms it, like, that it is really, it's mostly a bunch of sweet, well-meaning uh you know, suburban kids from across the country that want to feel connected and they feel connected to this band and to yeah. this community. Family. Everyone has a, wants a family bond. Yep. I think it's well, look, missing. You, yeah. you, can't, you, don't know what I, you can't tell what I look like because it's on the radio, but I certainly do. I don't look anything like a juggalo, but just the fact that I was there at all, everyone immediately just accepted me as a juggalo. Everywhere I walked, people would just go, whoop, whoop, and you know, like, family, and all this, you know, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, do you feel, do you, do you identify as a juggalo as a result of this uh, experience? I don't think that I would go that far, but if I was 13 years old and got <laughs> that, I would definitely be a juggalo right now. Oh, yeah, exactly. Cool. Did you get Did you get a juggalo nickname? I want to get. <laughs> I'm going to get to the meat yeah, of this soon. But oh, there we go. That's <laughs> name, actually. Well, what's your nickname? Uh, well, I was there with the camera crew. We were shooting uh, Danny Brown, who performs the rapper. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We followed his his uh, his time there, um, and we were out there with the camera crew, two cameras, and me. Uh, as a producer, and immediately we got nicknamed the Fun Bunch because we were walking around <laughs> and people would come up to us and just do whatever they wanted to do. So whenever anyone wanted to do anything fun, they would go, oh, go go find the Fun Bunch. And then they would do it in front of our cameras. It was just unbelievable. <laughs> so amazing. Cool. Oh, my God. Yeah. So tell us about, uh, you, you talked to Vaughn and Jay about this yeah, FBI so terror. This, this, it this. was an incredible conversation, i got to be honest. I mean, he is just a, a real class act. He's a really smart man. Um, he's very, very kind-hearted. And he's very upset about uh, this recent uh, FBI label of, of the drug laws. Uh, in 2011, they were added to the National Gang Threat Assessment List. Um, that, is, that looks at it's emerging ridiculous. gang trends. And they basically, they ended up categorizing four states um, that drug laws are, in fact, a violent gang. Um, and the, <clears throat> they've identified them by a few different criteria. These are people who drink and spray the, the soft drink they go. <laughs> they listen to horror a national rock threat. Music. <laughs> uh, they wear they wear face paint. They wear hatchet gear, which is oh ICP's God. clothing line. Um, they have tattoos of the Hatchet Man logo, ICP's logo. Yep. They do their hair in spider leg style, <laughs> um, and they display the gesture of the wicked clown, which is uh, you hold your uh, hand up with a C in uh, American Sign Language with your right hand. Um, but that's really <laughs> the only thing that they've managed to kind of categorize these people with. You know, so I don't get that. That, very, yeah. that doesn't make sense. Very I, yeah. Like uh, People dress up as Madonna. Yeah, like, is Madonna go, a yeah. gang now? The guys that they're dress up for Star Wars or Doctor Who or Rocky, uh, what is that? that? Rocky, Rocky, Rocky that's Horror? That's <laughs> like, uh, are they <laughs> gangs too? There, there have been many, many crimes committed by Juggalos that relate to the music of insane crime posse. Yeah. Um, a lot of uh, acts of violence with meat cleavers, which yep. uh, is part of their logo, um, people acting out their lyrics. It's not an, a completely unfounded generalization. Right. It certainly is a lot of violence. That's that true. And a lot of drug use. These people are not a gang by any standard. But that's what it, of course not. There's, but there's, there's I've seen their, like I've, you know, I've seen some questionable initiation rituals, like when they hit each other over the heads with signs and the <laughs> aforementioned uh, Fago spraying. But none of that is organized centrally by some sort of like sinister yeah. like Violent operation. J, Violent J isn't hit, putting hits out on people. Violent J isn't telling people to do these things. It's all. I mean, right. I, yeah, I gotta, I, I gotta respect this guy that he, yeah, is, is, is taking it to the FBI because I, I want to say a something church a gang? as an activist that has worked with people in the music industry. And you know, my girlfriend's been in radio for twenty five years. She deals with a lot of bands, and you know, I've done activism. Most people in Hollywood, most people that make money with music, they do not generally 
want to take a stance against the government because the, it's so easy for the government to shut down their concerts. It's so easy for the government to price them out of business. And these guys have taken a stand, and I, I really, it, you know, against the FBI, who are some of the toughest mother effers in the, in the, in the country. What, like, what, where is this going to go? He says he's going to sue. What, how is he going to sue? Is he going to go to U.S. federal court? Is he really thought this out, or is just just talk? What, what did he have to say about this whole situation? I know you talked to him for a while about the FBI. Yeah, they, they thought it out. Um, what they're kind of thinking about doing is something along the lines of a class action lawsuit. Um, I don't want to say that that's what they're doing, but what they're doing right now is they're asking uh, jugglers all over the country to send in um, different examples of moments when they've been discriminated against, whether or not they've been stopped by the mm -hmm. Border Patrol, whether or not they've been denied a flight on an airline, whether or not they've had their sentence increased. Because right now, for example, if you are on probation and you go in to meet with your probation officer uh, and you're wearing an ICP hat, that's considered gang apparel. Oh, my God. And that will actually increase your... I mean, that's a violation of probation. That's unbelievable. That's ridiculous. So that, it is ridiculous. <laughs> um, and, I mean, they're, right now they're just trying to find as many stories as they can. Um, they're being represented by a law firm. Uh, there's a website, generalsfightback.com. If any generals are listening, you should go check that out. Um, and they're just trying to get as much data as possible from their core group of fans to see whether or not they can fight the law. Wow. And it's also, in, in effect, it also serves as sort of a, a uh, know your rights activism action in and of itself. And it's teaching these kids to, like, you know, that they have a right to speak of about police abuse and about the legal system and stuff. So it has this, un, un, yeah. you know, maybe, you know, not to entirely intended, like, effect of perhaps making kids more active. In, more active. And, and exactly, if they feel they're being persecuted. Well, it's not just that. It's not just for the fans. It's also for the, the about 30 people working for Psychopathic well, Records, uh, ICP's record label. That's been around for uh, 20 years. Um, and those people, people who work at the record label, that's their career. Yeah. That's something that Violent J was talking about. These, these are, they have kids, they have wives, they have husbands, they have families. And next thing you know, they're working for a criminal organization. Yeah. And, they're, and, they're, and, they, and they can't. They're not getting as much sales because now Hot Topic won't carry their merchandise because it's be being called gang, gang related merchandise. Um, you know the other thing too, like the thing. Uh, another reason I really like this move is that in the future and in the past, there's been so much instances that I've been looking at for years and researching of the government seeming to clap down on anything that's educated and edgy. Or just censorship of music in yeah, general. Yeah, but they generally don't. They don't shut down generally the the dumb down. Like if you're just going along with society oh, selling products. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking. Well, no, this is ICP I mean, we're talking that's, about. That's we can't what I'm hold them up to such they, a high. I'm yeah. not talking about them. <laughs> okay. I'm talking about in general what I've studied for the last 20 years. And and in this case, you know, a lot of people can say ICP is dumbed down. I will say that their their audience, <laughs> but they have heart. And they're bringing people together, and that's what the government truly fears. Well, they they're truly also making a lot of money. People get getting together and having camaraderie and having family, and and I'm worried about having this set of precedents so that they're able to do this in the future. Maybe with the next group that's a little more political that shakes things up a little bit. This action of ICP taking a stand really does help out other musicians. Other people who are doing some things that are a little edgy that the government could consider a problem. You know, liberty groups. I'm a libertarian. I see this with the Ron Paul and the liberty groups. They're now being labeled as terrorist groups. This is the same fight. So I, 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 I hope that Violent J gets more political. I hope he looks at some of the candidates because they do have extreme... They do, he is extremely influential among a certain group of society that has been written off, that has no voice, and they need to find their voice and they need to get active. And welcome to the fight to the juggalos out there because I'm with you. <laughs> Can you tell... Do you, do you feel that uh, from talking to him that he could get more active, that this group could get more active in some of the things that I'm talking about? You know... To be completely honest, I don't think that the uh, generals are a particularly political group. Yeah. Uh, I think that they're more interested in, like you said, community, family. Um, they're more interested in giving a voice to people who are generally marginalized. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, they come from a, a serious underclass. Um, they're a very, very marginalized group. Um, and 
if they wanted to be political, I think that they could, but frankly, I think that they're, they're more about just fostering this community. Sure. <laughs> but I, I'm uh, telling you, which they, is all which is all well yeah, and good they, in my uh, opinion. <laughs> yeah, but I want to say that they, you know, I, I understand uh, the reality and what you're saying, but they can't avoid the politics because the politics have come. This is the uh, situation in America today. If you don't, if you ignore politics, well, eventually they're knocking at your door, and they're knocking at the door of ICP now, and ICP mm-hmm. is going to have to get political so- in certain ways to re- to to protect their community that they've established. And and I gotta applaud that. I'm glad that they're uh, not rolling over, and that they're gonna no. they're gonna they're gonna fight for what's theirs. They're, they're no, I mean this is this is the first step for them, and, and you know they've gotten even just in the comments and the reaction that um, we've seen through Vice to the article. Um, people of all walks of life are very very are applauding them and standing. And I think that it's a deserved applause. I mean they really are taking a stand in a way that, like you said before, not a lot of artists are feel comfortable doing. Seeing the FBI. Looking to be a gang. That's a bold move. Yeah, that is very bold. bold move. Absolutely, balls. Ball. Let's hear it for ICP for <laughs> having the balls to go forward with this. I never thought I would do this, but you've definitely made me re- reaffirmed my need to go to the gathering of the Juggalos, and uh, mm-hmm. I think I'll meet you there. Yeah. I'll meet you there next year. I'm going to say it. I'm committing to it right now. I've always well, wanted I'm- to do it. And it's I'm going now. I have to go every year now. I mean, it's, it's, just, <laughs> it's, it's a music festival like nothing I've ever seen. I can imagine. Um, How was the foam party? <laughs> oh my gosh! There's just so much. Uh, you know, I, I there's so much spraying of foam. So much. You know, like wet t-shirt contest. The whole thing is a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> so ridiculous! Um, it's a carnival but, of know, horrors. Like, <laughs> can I say it again? I said it was like, it's like a carnival of horrors, but like, it's yep. fun in that horrifying way, and everybody is in it together, so you have to participate in it. See, I was thinking about LARPing and going undercover as a jugglet, but as you said, I don't even need to do that. I can just nope. show up, and as long as I'm on, for, I'm down for the ride, I'll have a whole well, new it, family. <laughs> it, take, it takes place so far away from any kind of established society. It's in this place called um, Cave in Rock. Cave in Rock. Right? Which is a, it's actually been a classic hideout for uh, criminals, rum runners, drug runners, counterfeiters uh, since the mid 19th century. Uh, right now, uh, it's on private property and it's being used during the rest of the year as a 1% biker uh, health angel uh, hangout. Wow. Um, wow. And if you get there, I mean, you have to drive through hours of dirt roads. You know, it's really, really out there and you, you don't see any other cars. And then all of a sudden, you turn this one corner and go over a little ridge, and you see this huge carnival with huge, uh, you know, merry-go-rounds, Ferris wheels, and just thousands and thousands of drugged-out people. <laughs> 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 oh my and, you know, god! These people. This is the one time of the year that they have to not be marginalized, and the one time of the year they have to not be trod upon by everyone else. I mean, that they, they, a lot. Everyone I spoke, so many people I spoke to were were underemployed. Um, were, were, had major health problems, um, and you know this is the time of their year to shine and kind of yeah. you know, be around their community. And That's everyone, cool. One thing I, I was traveling around with the um, with the Juggalos press agent, uh, who I didn't even realize. I mean, with, with the ICP press agent, I didn't realize that they had that kind of infrastructure, but naturally they do. And she said, "Look, whatever happens, if someone says whoop whoop to you, you have to say it." <laughs> Uh-huh. You don't say it back to them, they're going to know that you're not a part of this. And it's, that's the one thing that you have to keep in mind. It's like saying and the Lord's Prayer in short church. Like, you, you have to do it. Oh, yep. man. That's, I mean, you're painting a pretty idyllic picture here of the Gathering so, yeah, of the Juggalos. I want to know. Exactly. Tell me about the CD Underbelly. <laughs> okay, well, the CD Underbelly is there's a lot of 15-year-old girls and boys oh. there who are on an extreme amount of drugs. Last year, someone died. Um, this year there were 10 arrests the day before the festival. <laughs> I heard uh, about that. Around. Yeah, um, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot of very unsafe behavior going on. There's a lot of drugs that you're not sure of, their, of where they come from. Granted, that doesn't really matter. But the point is, like, there's, there's a lot of unsafe activity <laughs> because there's literally no police force. Uh, there's right. security, um, but there's no police. There, and I saw a few ambulances here and there, but you also see a lot of people lying face down on the ground. Uh, or... A lot of, you know, I, you see like a 16-year-old girl just pounding with it, barely able to stand up. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing where you start to realize, you know what, there, 
as happy as everyone is and as, as carefree as people seem, um, it's a very, very, uh, that there's a lot of business side element to it as well. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. I think for the insane clown posse who are, they're chilling on this beautiful bus and, you know, they're being ferreted around and they're, you know, they, they're seeing this wonderful family. But right. I think that there are a lot of desperate people. Uh, the FBI <laughs> actually, in their report, um, and I think that this is completely accurate, uh, they mentioned that, um, that the drug are, are sporadic, disorganized, and individualistic and decentralized groups of people. A lot of these people are homeless. So, yeah. A lot of these people have drug problems. Yeah. A lot of these people have criminal records. So yeah. that's like the um, exact opposite of a gang. Yeah. <laughs> and how is that, how is that ICP's... Ridiculous. Like, you know, all, all the, the things that you can look at, uh, even at the concert, you know, with the, with the 15 and the 16-year-old kids, that's pa- no parents. Like, that's this society today it's not uh icp you know they're drawn well, from that to, crowd i have to disagree with you there I, I have to disagree i mean i saw many many families there yeah, yeah. definitely many full families oh, uh, absolutely kids around well, uh, i'm not disagreeing families, yeah but I'm, t- I'm talking about a 15 year old or 16 year old that's out of control you know near death there even if the parent is there it, th- there's something wrong like that's not yeah, clearly they can't t- you can't put that it's like it's like putting bat the Batman shooting on Batman. Mm. Like it's not Batman that did that. It's the society no, that did that. No, it's a guy. <laughs> it's well, a guy and the guy. That. But no, but <laughs> there's obviously issues that are happening here that are yeah. ongoing, untreated, I, I unsupported, that's... undocumented. This guy had mental health issues with right. Batman. This is it's society. So society isn't dealing with mm-hmm. the issues that are here. I see what you're saying. I mean, this yeah, is something This is something I was concerned about, and I think part of the reason why I haven't gone yet is because being a woman, I think, in this environment would be a lot uh, perhaps more dangerous. For You know, I, I think, I mean, I want to know if, is, if is that confirmed by what you saw, by, you know, in any way, that you there know, was, like, sexual it, assault. There were many, many women walking around completely nude. Mm-hmm. Uh, I That's live, like I live in New York City. <laughs> if you walk around completely naked in New York City, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know what I mean? Like, out there, I, I mean, look, I'm, I don't want to say that it's a, it's a wonderful post-misogynist utopia, um, but I think that people felt very safe. Anytime that we saw a fight happen, that we, we rarely would see anyone get violent or angry. But the second that anything happened, there would be a, a swarm of people around it breaking it up chanting family, trying to diffuse the situation. That's cool. Um, wow. And I, you know, I give them a lot of credit. I, I really think that, I like that. they Sounds don't like they want to have it. a bad time. They don't want anyone to have a bad time because in their mind, they're, like I said before, they're marginalized the entire year. This is the one moment when this, they have... This, this is their holiday. This is their 420, this is their Christmas. They're, 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 they don't want any more bad publicity than they've already got. You know, like yep. Miles and Jay was saying his attorneys were, were pressuring him to maybe not even have the gathering of jugglers this year. Because this is the first year that they have been classified as a violent gang. Um, so this, like I said before, this is considered technically a gang rally. Um, yeah, that's so unbelievable. Everyone there knows this, and everyone that we spoke to is aware of the recent legislation or the, the recent ca- uh, categorization of drugs as a violent criminal gang. Um, they're trying their hardest to present the best face. Every time that we would speak to someone, I would say half the people we spoke to would say, "Oh, you filmed a documentary?" And say, "Yeah." They would say, okay, well, how are you going to portray us? Are you going to portray us as, as dumb rednecks? And I would say, no. And they'd say, okay, great. Then they'd talk to you, and they'd be totally pleasant, totally wonderful. Maybe I'm looking at this all through rose-colored glasses because, like I said, I've never been anywhere like this in my life. Um, <laughs> but I found it to be a, a wonderful environment. What, um, what do you think would have happened if you said you, you were portraying them badly? Uh, I think they would have just walked away. Yeah. 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 Most likely. Yeah. N- no, they I would have walked away and had, you know, had their own time. But we, you know, we spoke with, with war veterans who were out there. Um, we, I spoke with a man who was on leave from Afghanistan, um, and he told the military, "Look, he told he told the, the military, look, this is my religion. I ha- I have to go home. This is just in the same way that you need to go home for Ramadan, for you know Christmas, whatever yeah. it is you need yep. to celebrate. That's, this that's is my the Mecca." That is yeah, it's my mecca. Isn't that yeah. kind of uh, like almost, that, that's a better explanation for it than gang. That it's more right, like that a it's religion. More like a religion, and that's why I was saying earlier, it is a church considered a gang? Yeah, and the you know, in religious iconography, yeah. and you know, specifically, is the FBI considered a gang? Hey, 
Yeah. I mean, I think the FBI is a gang, and I think that they're picking on the the ICP now. I mean, you know, let's be clear here. It's, yeah. Uh, this in is in terms of a national threat level, I think it's absolutely ludicrous that they would be, you know, uh, profiling ICP fans, fans of a music, a musical group, and uh, in a in a community to be. Uh, dangerous yeah. threat enough to to you know classify them as a gang. And especially, it is yeah, ridiculous. The, the the big thing I really bugs me is that 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 this has an effect of shutting down the band, their shutting business, down free speech. their twenty or thirty or forty employees that they have. It's just that that really bugs me. That should never yeah. happen over something like this. This is way out of hand. Like, uh, let me ask you another question. With uh, did, did was there any indication, or have you done any research to find out that? Has anyone successfully challenged a, 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 a list like this from the FBI? Have they been able to be, you know, take themselves off? Have, has anyone sued the FBI over things like this in the past? Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I literally got back from the interview <laughs> and wrote it while I was still sure. covered in Fago. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I haven't done the, 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 the kind of intensive journalistic research that would have produced a long-form piece. Yep. Um, however, I have... The, through perusing the comments and perusing the internet, I know that this that there have been challenges like this made before. I can't point to individual uh, uh, examples of this. I wish that I could, um, but uh, mostly because I'm still recovering from the. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next day, next year, I'll be right there with you. I swear. I just, I, I'm so convinced, and I want to support them in any way I can, even if I think their music is terrible. I think, yeah. I think it's god awful. But uh, at another festival, uh, Burning Man, I, I ran into some Juggalos, and that you know has some similarities to the Gathering of the Juggalos for sure. And they were the nicest kids the I'd thing, ever yeah. met. We had a blast. We had a great time, and I was like, you know what I, we got you all wrong That's so it. i'm glad I, I, i've been a i've been a believer for a boat. while I, I've, I've, i'm not uh into the culture of their ICP, music is absolutely terrible but, but <laughs> i've met some juggalos and and hung out with them and friends with them and i think they're the nicest people i have right mad on. respect for them and they're the way that they live the family thing i, I love family i think it's yeah. a good thing i mean look at burning man burning to me, Burning Man, and I, no offense to anyone out there. Who oh, I have plenty Man. of I mean, critiques about it, absolutely. You what? Sorry, oh, I was just saying I have plenty of critiques about it myself, absolutely, yeah, so I mean, don't worry. Like, Burning Man, to me, is an excuse, no offense, for yuppies to go oh, and yeah. act poorly. Yeah. Oh, days. yeah. You know I mean? like, where, you know, this is a, a place for jugglers to show, to be on their, their, not best behavior, but, you know, to put their best foot forward, to, to really enjoy somebody's company. And, I don't know, again... I, I, I recognize that I am painting it in a, in a, in a degree of, of kind of rosy <laughs> language. Uh, there's certainly a lot of negative things that happen there. Um, and there's certainly a lot of desperate people. Uh, but I, com- I utterly commend their, the St. Tom Posse's uh, attempt at a lawsuit. Um, and, I, you know, I really think that, they're, that, they, that they'll be successful. I don't think that the FBI has much of a case, to be completely honest. I mean, besides the, the most like, random violence that occurs. Uh, there's random violence in any subset of, of humanity, in any subset of culture. Um, you know, and sure, there's, there's violent acts committed by jugglers. Uh, there's violent acts committed by Christians. There's mm-hmm. violent acts committed by Jews. There's violent acts committed by any religion, any group. Um, and I think that maybe, you know, they, they come from, on the whole, they come from a lower class background. They mm-hmm. come from... They, they, from uh, you know, Sh- Shaggy Tudor and Violent J both came from from very very desperate homes. Um, did they you know did they manage to escape? Which is good. I don't know. Like I, 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 I think that it's a ridiculous uh, ridiculous uh, categorization. Of them. Exactly. Uh, we all agree with you to that. Yeah. I, I think we can only say whoop whoop. Yeah whoop whoop whoop. whoop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean the last thing I wanted to ask is just what like as other mainstream media are contacting you now because you seem to have broken the story. I haven't seen it anywhere else. Yeah, um, I, I mean I was lucky uh, because you know like I said I was in their bus and they they've been Ryan Jane mentioned it to me and. You know, he said, we're going to be announcing this tomorrow. We were lucky to be able to jump on the story quickly. Awesome. Um, it was just a, a great time. One of those kind of wonderful timing yeah. scenarios. People have been citing uh, the, the Vice and the Noisy article. Um, and, you know, uh, it's, it's mostly a, a process of citation. Um, and, you know, we, the interview that he gave us was so wonderful and so, so soul-searching. Um, I think that we're getting paid a lot of respect in terms of um, having broken the story and having this wonderful asset in the form of this 
fantastic interview. Um, we have been getting a lot of outreach from other outlets. Um, hopefully, I'll be doing you know more things like this and just sort of spreading the word. Right um, and you know, again, encouraging jugglers to, like you said, kind of step their rights a little bit and understand that that this is uh, an issue that they should be concerned about because it affects all of them. Absolutely. And it affects music, it affects free speech, it affects, uh, it, it goes far beyond just this individual yep, band. That dreaded word, politics, uh, that they don't want to deal with. Any sort of community at yeah. all, whatsoever, yeah. any style of dress, any style, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge in the implications, and I think it's, it's excellent that you're paying the respect that I guess the juggalos don't necessarily get very often. So I, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm giving them respect as a result of this interview. We thank you so yeah. much. Can you also call back in the future and give us an update if you yeah. find out more info and kind of update Absolutely. us? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm in touch with, with ICP now and, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to follow everything that they do from now on. So yes, I, I will be in touch with you guys to hear anything else. Yeah. You know, All right. We'll, and if there's woo anything, woo! anything we can do in, in Boston or through our station for ICP, you let oh them know God, we, yeah. are, we are here for them. I'm, a, you know, I've been doing activism <laughs> a long time. Have the Mac too. We we have some connections. I know they got lots of money and way more connections. But if they need any help with the politics they from people with show, pure heart they want us that to. have experience, they want to come <laughs> on our show. We're here. We support them. Right on. I would not be surprised at all. I mean, within you know, they were giving us complete access you know it's very easy to they're extremely approachable people they're not rock stars uh they'll look you right in the eye and talk to you and be very very kind-hearted and, and you know i they're, they're some of the nicest musicians that i've ever met in my that's family. amazing i'm awesome. sure that they would be completely happy to, to talk to you guys about anything great that's great that's awesome well we got we we're we're making friends and family our uh, our circle is ever wider and and thank you for being a part of it today you're the best uh, it was it was a very nice interview. We're glad to have you hey, on any time. <laughs> uh, again, once again, I'm really happy to talk to you guys about this. Thanks so much for thinking of me. Oh, awesome. absolutely. What a joy. What a pleasure. And you can look up that story on vice.com. Vice.com. Mm -hmm. uh, the story, well, oh, I just had it and I lost it. It's uh, ICP has announced their plans to sue the FBI. Yeah. Well, check it out. So weigh Google in it. on that. Uh, you can do, uh, what was the, the Juggalos... Uh, Oh, man. What was that uh, website that Juggalos can submit their uh, stories? It's, it's um, JuggalosFightBack.com. That's it. That's the one. So if you're listening and you're a Juggalo, we like you.